Is the United States supporting Al-Qaeda in Syria? The answer is yes. Fact number one. There is no question that Al-Qaeda fighters are part of the opposition forces attempting to overthrow Syria's government. Fact number two. The creation of Al-Qaeda wasn't Islamic fundamentalism. It was the CIA. The Mujahideen was created by the CIA to cause problems for the Soviets. And you might say that's crazy talk, right? Here's Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. To be, to be fair, we had helped to create the problem we're now fighting. How? Because when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, we had this brilliant idea that we were going to come to Pakistan and create a force of Mujahideen, equip them with Stinger missiles and everything else to go after the Soviets inside Afghanistan. And we were successful. The Soviets left Afghanistan and then we said, great, goodbye, leaving these trained people who were fanatical in Afghanistan and Pakistan, leaving them well armed, creating a mess, frankly, that uh, at the time we didn't really recognize. We were just so happy to see the Soviet Union fall and we thought, okay, fine, we're, we're okay now. Everything's going to be so much better. Now you look back, the people we're fighting today, we were supporting in the fight against the Soviets. Ah, uh, so it's not a conspiracy theory, it's history. And it's history that's being repeated in Libya and now in Syria. But there is a bigger problem here, one that every American should be questioning. We're fighting Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, but we're also bombing Al-Qaeda targets in Pakistan and in Yemen. And as we do that, something occurs known as collateral damage. Hundreds of civilians in Yemen have been killed in just the first half of 2012 by U.S. airstrikes aimed at Al-Qaeda fighters. We also have a history of kind of moving in and out of Pakistan. I mean, let's remember here, the people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. And we did it because we were locked in this struggle with the Soviet Union. They invaded Afghanistan, and we did not want to see them control Central Asia. And we went to work. And it was President Reagan, in partnership with the Congress, um, led by Democrats, who said, you know what, sounds like a pretty good idea. Let's deal with the ISI and the Pakistani military and let's go recruit these Mujahideen and let's great, let's get some to come from Saudi Arabia and other places importing their Wahhabi brand of Islam so that we can go beat the Soviet Union. And we, guess what? They retreated, they lost billions of dollars and it led to the collapse of the Soviet Union. So there's a, a very strong argument which is wasn't a bad investment to end the Soviet Union but let's be careful what we sow because we will harvest. And we now are making up for a lot of lost time. So what you need to know tonight is heavy. Our government is bombing sites around the world in an ongoing war with Al-Qaeda. In Iraq, where Al-Qaeda had no presence before the U.S. war, Al-Qaeda is now thriving. The same Al-Qaeda, yes, created by the U.S. government in order to harm the Soviets. And today, at least 13,000 civilians in Afghanistan are dead as a result of that war with Al-Qaeda. So with all respect to Ms. Fitzgerald from the Irish Times, this is not propaganda. Rather, it is the question that every American should be demanding answers on from Congress and from this president. Why are we giving Al-Qaeda fighters money and weapons to overthrow yet another government in the Middle East? Today, our government claims they're freeing the people of Syria. Tomorrow, if history tells us anything, we will be killing and wounding civilians in airstrikes and then referring to them as collateral damage in a war with an enemy who we brought to power.